places and and you know they felt that you know it was sort of a cheap shot against this guy who was trying to help out uh, Jews and you know and, and it, it's frustrating on that front because um, you know there's a lot that doesn't make it into the paper. I mean we wrote a lot about the case obviously, but there's a lot that doesn't make it into the paper. I mean there were certain things that he was doing as well that were just you know just that just didn't make any sense. I mean he was he had uh, you know he had signed letters of support for. You know, people in the community who had, you know, who had ripped off other members in the community, you know, and in the bar mitzvah that was held, it was held for Tivia Stern, who was somebody who who ripped off the community, his own, you know, fellow Jews, and then skipped town for years. And you know, it's far from somebody who is, you know, frankly, you know, to use a Jewish term like a Rahmanis case, you know, somebody who needs our, you know, our kindness. I mean, I think, you know, I, I think, I, you know, I, there's a. I've gone through this discussion a lot, and it, it frustrates me because, you know, people sometimes will, you know, the, the big term that people throw around at some points, which is ridiculous, is they call me a Moser. I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but... Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and you know, Somebody, Yeah, I mean, and somebody at one point said, like, which is shocking, <laughs> shocking. I mean, somebody at one point said, you're a Moser, and, like, technically speaking, you, you know, we can kill you. Which is like, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, uh, at what point are you going to, like, take out the stones and start throwing them? I mean, it's just ridiculous. And he was saying it was straight up, I and mean, in a very serious way, which is a little bit scary, frankly, a little frightening. Um, uh, so, you know, there's, you know, there's that element to the whole thing. And, you know, and I, I think it's ridiculous because I think there's plenty of rabbis and I forgot who, there's one big rabbi, I forgot who it was, like, the name, like, twist my mind, but, you know, who, I think they asked him at one point, they were like, oh, we should do pigeon shooing, which is like, you know, rescuing people from jail in America, you know, it's this huge mitzvah to do that. And I think he ruled that he's like, you know, this is crazy, like, this is America, you know, you have to follow laws. And if somebody's in jail, you know, the, the court systems here are, you know, are legitimate and, to, you know, to, to a various, you know, it's a, Strong degree, and somebody's in jail. You know, that's that's where they belong. It does, you know, there's nothing. You know, that mitzvah does not apply. And you know, and I'm sure that a hundred other rabbis can come, you know, come back to me and quote me other things. You know, to the contrary, but it's, you know, it, it's it's academic. I mean, I think it's just academic. Have you been punched by your fellow Orthodox Jews? I wasn't for your punched. Like, I wasn't punched. I wasn't punched. There was somebody in my synagogue who got really upset, like very frustrated, and he told his days really mad, and he shoved me like in the back of the synagogue, which was kind of ridiculous, you know. I thought that was, I was like, I, yeah. I mean, I thought that was crazy, and you know, I, people are upset. Um, I, a close friend of mine, his, his mother is really mad, and you know, like I used to be very close friends with them, and. Um, this is difficult to talk about, like on the record, and but you know they they were um, they were really mad, and and I they basically said like you can't come to our house anymore, you can't eat at our house anymore, and um, you know I think it's ridiculous, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'm still very close friends with him. He's like he's my best friend, frankly. Um, but it was you know it was tr- it was difficult. Like I got put in the middle of that. I put my like closest friend in the middle of that. Um, you know over over kind of stupidity. You know over over uh, you know she asked frankly uh, you know. It's a long story, but apparently she had asked a rabbi about, you know, whether they could have me eating at their house anymore. And the rabbi said, like, as long as I apologize for what I did, then they could still have me. You know, like, she demanded that I apologize over, you know, the articles I was writing. Yeah, Did you apologize? Did you apologize? For what? I mean, for what? For for highlighting, you know, for highlighting, uh, for highlighting the wrongs, you know? I mean, no, I mean, that's crazy. No, I just, you know, I, I, and frankly, it's it's not something, you know, I don't, you know, it's a little uncomfortable because these are people that are obviously, like, at one point were very close with me, and, you know, and I have a lot of, I still, you know, I have a lot of respect um, for my friend. He's a really close friend, and it, it was, it's a touchy subject, frankly. Um, How many friends have you lost from just doing journalism? Uh, I haven't lost any. I haven't lost any. Um, you know, I think it put a little strain on some of my friendships, but I haven't lost any friends. I mean, not at all. I had a girlfriend who was raised uh, Orthodox in in Manhattan and went to uh, Ramaz, I believe. And uh, like we were talking about my going back to New York to to visit her family who who are all off room. And uh, she said, they would kill you. They'd like take out a contract and have you killed. (laughs) God, that's scary. I, I, I guess it just sounds all like kind of crazy. Are they like are they like Hasidic or like what's their background? Um, I think they're more yeshivish, litvish, yeshivish, and uh, like I didn't agree with her um, that the, they the, they would take out a contract to, to kill me. <laughs> I think that's highly un- unlikely, but it kind of it just gives you an indication of how strong the feelings are in much of Orthodox life against. Any journalism that makes Jews look bad, particularly Orthodox yeah, I, Jews. I mean, I get, I get like some crazy emails and some like really angry. Like somebody once I'm like, 
like recently actually, like I think the last crazy email I was like talking about with some friends was like, they're like, oh, you're like Hitler. And I was like, you know what, I, I'm a little bit surprised. I thought like, you know, I'm a little bit more like, I can see myself like Himmler, maybe, you know, Eichmann, maybe, uh, Hitler, no. Nah. That's pushing it, that's pushing it. Uh, so y you talked about how the perception was that your article resulted in uh, more difficult treatment for Jewish prisoners and how this was not accurate. But let's say, it was accurate for for a different story, a hypothetical story. Uh, would you feel bad if uh, an accurately reported story of yours caused more difficult treatment for Jewish prisoners? Yeah, it's hypothetical. I I don't like to go into hypotheticals. I think that's you know um, you know in difficult treatment. I mean, like I'm not for you know any favoritism at all. You know, in any fact, I just think you know you do the crime, you do the time. You know, it just it's not, uh, you know, I mean, I, I heard stories, and I still hear stories about what was going on there, and it's, it's shocking. I mean, people were telling me that they were getting calls from the people that were in that, in that jail in the tombs, like, all the time, like, every day. They were, like, you know, Shabbos was, like, just, like, a regular Shabbos. They'd have, like, a big kiddish, chalant, you know, like, it was just, like, a big party, frankly. And, you know, I mean, these are people who are not, you know, you know these are people who who broken the law. I mean, and it's not just, like, broken the law, like, they've gone through a red light. I mean, you know, they've, they've done some serious stuff, and... You know, there's absolutely no reason why, you know, they should be treated any differently than anyone else who's, who's broken the law. And, you know, obviously it's not up to me to decide, you know, what the punishments are and what not, but, um, you know, I'm a journalist and I highlight, you know, when things, you know, when this kind of thing. I mean, that's what I do. That's my job. How much responsibility do you bear, if any, for the consequences of what you write, so long as what you write is accurate and in the public interest? Um, I mean, what do you mean by responsibility? Like, uh... Well, when we write things, it changes people's lives and can, uh, you know, have enormous repercussions. So, like the traditional Jewish approach, I think, is is on the side of discretion rather than disclosure. So, kind of what you're doing, what I'm doing, is um, not part of like the dominant trend of of. Uh, of the, of the Jewish approach to uh, disclosure versus discretion. I, I try. So, um, here's the thing: like yeah. in the New York Post, this is much more of like a New York Post question than it is sort of about a Jewish reporter. The New York Post is uh, sensational tabloid, you know, extreme stuff. Um, and something I learned really early on in the paper was um, I, I try to sift through the ideas that I have or the tips that I get uh, to highlight the, the extremes because. I think there's sometimes people do things that are wrong or, you know, or, or you know, bad calls or marginal. And, you know, I, I try my best to avoid having to get involved in those stories because, you know, when it lands in your post, it's not good. You know, you're, you're, you're frankly, like, lack of a better term, you're up shit's creek. You don't want to hear from me, you know, as a reporter. You don't, you don't want to be getting calls from me. And you don't, definitely don't want to see your name in the paper. Um, so I, I'm, I'm well aware of that. So, you know, I try my best to, obviously, there's a lot of pressure on me to do that, like, you know, to constantly have a new story, a new scandal, a new outrage, that kind of thing. Um, but in the same time, I try to, as my, my, you know, I try my best to balance that with, um, you know, with the most extreme cases that I that I that come across, you know, or that I think, that, you know, that I can kind of get look into. Um, and also, like, I don't just cover Jewish stuff, obviously. Um, I frankly haven't read, you know, stuff about Jews um, in a while, actually. Um, it's been a little bit. But obviously, that to me is an easier. It's sometimes, it's, frankly, it's like it's a little bit easier for me to get into those stories because it's the world that I live in. So, um, you know, frankly, when, you know, the other stuff like politics and I cover, I, I generally cover a lot of correction stuff. So that's, um, you know, it's a different, you know, element of, you know, you say responsibility. I mean, there's always responsibility. It's not just about the Jewish articles I write. It's about anything I write. Um, you know, like we, a colleague of mine did a story about these EMTs who were playing um, roulette. What's it called? Like when you, on the computer, where you, like, you know, you randomly, like, meet somebody on this, like, their picture comes up for, like, 10 seconds or 30 seconds. I forgot what it's, something roulette, I forgot what it's called. Um, it was this, you know, popular sort of game that people were playing for a while. And they were doing it, they were EMTs, they were doing it in the ambulance, like, while they were just on break. You know, they did a story and the guys got fired. You know, it's tough. I mean, when you write stories like that, somebody's goofing off at work, they're going to get fired. I mean, I did a story about a jail officer who fell asleep. You know, somebody sent us in a picture, she was sleeping with the keys, you know, to the cell dangling by her side, you know. You know, it's tough. And what it turns out, she's got, like, a bunch of kids. You know, she's tired. She's working an overnight shift. You know, but look, you know, do I go to my office and fall asleep? You know, obviously not. You know, it's tough. You know, does it make for a funny story? And does everyone love it? I mean, when we run the photo, sure. You know, 